Welcome back, folks. This is the third teaching of eight from the December content of the ICT Mentorship. We're going to be talking about reinforcing order block theory, selecting and avoiding. And we're going to first talk about the bullish order block. Everything I say here, you'll just reverse for a bearish order block to save time. Definition of a bullish order block is the lowest candle or price bar with a down close that has the most range between open to close and is near a support level. Validation of a bullish order block is when the high of the lowest down candle or price bar is traded through by a later formed candle or price bar. Entry techniques using a bullish order block. When price trades higher away from the bullish order block and then returns to the bullish order block candle or price bar high, this is bullish and can be used for a bullish entry. Defining risk with bullish order block. The low of the bullish order block is the location of a relatively safe stop loss placement. Just below the 50% of the order block total range is also considered to be a good location to raise the stop loss after price runs away from the bullish order block to reduce risk when applicable. Okay, let's take a look at a supposed support line. Now that can be in the form of a old low on a long term or higher time frame chart. It could be an old high where price has moved above recently and now we're trading back down into it. So simple support resistance ideas are just enough here. But the main thing is you want to be using it on a higher time frame charts like a monthly, weekly or daily. And eventually you'll see price trade down into this level that you identified as a support level. Once price trades down into the support level, and it could trade to it or just through it, doesn't make a difference. But what we're doing is, is we're waiting for price to show us indications that smart money or a large body of big flows or those individuals that are on an institutional level that have a whole lot more collectively than we do in terms of money, when they participate in a move, it'll be seen in price action. So when we have this down candle, we have already assuming that this may be a bullish order block. We don't know that yet until at a later time when another candle trades through it. What are we specifically aiming for? We're identifying our focus. The down candle's high when that is violated with a new candle and it trades through that high. Now we have a validated bullish order block. This candle validates the down candle as a bullish order block. Now, at this moment, if we trade back down, once that down candle or suspected bullish order blocks high is violated, we can now highlight that candle's high. And even in the very candle that broke that down candle's high, if it trades back down to that down candle's high or the bullish order blocks high, that could be a retraded price that which we could day trade off of or enter our longs early. In other words, we don't have to wait for a later time for it to trade back down into this level. Eventually price will run away. At this point, if you didn't enter on a retrade at the bullish order blocks high, you're simply going to be waiting for price to want to pull back. Now we have indications that there has been displacement in the marketplace. That means someone with a whole lot of money and a whole lot of interest wanting to see higher prices is now in play. They are participating in the marketplace. This is the evidence in price action that you have institutional sponsorship behind the move. Large flows or institutional traders have the capacity to move price, whereas we as lower grade traders in terms of retail or smaller traders in terms of in respect of a bank or a large uh, entity in an institutional capacity, uh, we can't move the marketplace, but they as a whole collectively can. So what we do is we wait. We're patiently watching price. 
the anticipate price to start to retrade back down into that down candle or bullish order blocks high. At this moment, we can set alerts. We identify the high on that candle. Now I'm using the bodies of the candles. We may end up using the wick, but I want your focus primarily on the bodies of the candles. And when we talk about wicks, I'm going to overlap order blocks with fair value gas because that is going to be the answer to many of your questions as to relates to when do we use the wicks and when do we use the bodies of the candles. But primarily, I want you focusing on the bodies of the candles when we're talking about order blocks as a whole. So at, at some point, when we see that level, okay, that high of that order block, when we're close to it, we can now set an alert. We can set our platform to remind us with a text to our phone or email us or however it is that you would be uh, alerted by your platform. Some platforms have pretty sophisticated means of contacting you. Others are just simply a, you know, an audible alarm that goes off on your computer to draw your attention to a specific market. But until then, you're going to submit to time. You're waiting. Now, this is sometimes the hardest thing to do as a trader. We identify what we're looking for in terms of a entry, but you have to wait for price to get down there. While price is trading lower, you should already formulate an idea of what it is that you're going to do in terms of risk, how much you're going to put on the trade when you buy long, and where you're aiming to get out of the market with a profit. All those things should be factored in during this time. Eventually, price will drive down into that down candle or bullish order blocks high. At that moment, if you're in front of your charts, that's when you enter the market with a long position. If you have a limit order, you're going to add a few pips, and preferably it's about five pips we like to add to a bullish candle. And that way, the spread will be able to kick us in on a long entry. But you don't have to always rely on a limit order. Uh, you can go and read the market as it hits that down candle. Now, sometimes it'll drive a little bit deeper into that bullish order block, and that's okay. But for now, I want you to try to key off your demo entries on the down candles body of the candle, the high, or the open in this instance. Any down candle, um, the body is going to begin with the opening and it ends with the close. What we're actually looking at is internal range liquidity. Now, when we're trading inside the range, and that range is defined here, what we're looking for is an expansion up and to a known level of what? What's up there? Well, that's going to come in the form of external range liquidity. That external range liquidity is where we're going to be looking to offset some or all of our long position. Now we identified the buy level, we've entered the market. Before we do this, what we should have had in mind is ideally where we're looking to take our profits, that's up here above an old high, and that's going to be in the form of buy stops. So if we're buying or entering long, inside of a known range at a bullish order block at internal range liquidity we're buying the liquidity it's offered at that level we're going to be looking to sell our position to willing buyers in the form of those individuals that hold buy stops above that old high that's all well and good for profit taking but what do we do for risk we take our attention back down to that bullish order block because it's going to give you everything you need for your trading plan we identify the entry at the open of the down candle. That's our buy point, or five pips above it. But we want to focus our attention in the midway point of that down candle. That's going to be in the form of the mean threshold. Ideally, the best order blocks will not see price trade down below the midway point of the entire body of the candle. You're going to measure the open to the close on the down candle to measure where the middle of it is. Do not use the wicks. Don't use the very high or the very low. Measure your Fibonacci level. 50% level or halfway point is the mean threshold on a, on a bullish order block. 
And same thing said with a bearish order block, but you just don't want to see price drive down deeper than the mean threshold by very much. It can stab through it just by a little bit, but we primarily don't want to see it trade down there at all. The better order blocks won't do it at all. And your protective sell stop is going to be below the bullish order blocks low or below the close. Now, at this point, depending upon where that low is, it could be the low of the wick, but primarily you're going to be looking at the low formed by the close of the body of that candle. Now, again, focusing on what we anticipate in price, eventually price should show a responsiveness and trade up and through our old high. When that happens, you're going to be looking to take partial profits or all your profits, depending upon how big that move was and how much profitability you've obtained. What you're actually trying to do is you're going to be pairing your long exit with willing buy stops. And that is essentially bullish order block trading in a nutshell. It's been complicated by many people on the YouTube that's adopted it. And those that want to use it on Twitter and on social media, they've shared some several ideas. But I want to focus on the simplicity of them here. And then we're going to graduate into more teaching uh, later on in this month that are going to be subordinate subtopics that are going to be taught to you during the week of Christmas. So I'm going to give you actually more amplified teaching with the order blocks. So this is not the entire treaty on order blocks as it relates to uh, buying and selling. Okay, liquidity based bias. Okay, if the monthly chart is bearish, the weekly charts bearish and the daily charts bearish, that'll give us a wonderful opportunity to get in sync with institutional order flow. Intraday charts four hours and less will be correcting and retracing higher. Now, again, the markets are predisposed to go lower because the monthly, the weekly, and daily, we have arrived at a bias that we have seen price want to go lower. It's been making lower lows and lower highs. Support levels are giving way. Uh, resistance levels are being formed and being respected. When you see those evidences in price along the lines of the monthly, weekly, and daily, we can zero in on the four hour, okay, and start looking for liquidity on the buy side. In other words, there's going to be a premium built into the marketplace or a rally. You're going to be looking to sell rallies. Protective buy stop raids or returns to bearish order blocks or fair value gaps and or filling up a liquidity void, each offering a potential low resistance liquidity run, shorting for a target under a recent low. What low would you be uh, targeting? Well, you want to be primarily looking to see what's near term on the daily chart. What liquidity is resting on that daily chart that your trade on a short could be looking to take advantage of buying back below a daily low where sell stops would be resting. If there is an objective that you can see on the weekly chart, much in the same way we would have identified something on the daily, we would be looking for that objective as well. Primarily, you're going to be trading in the direction of the monthly chart because that's where the large funds and institutional order flow is going to begin. And then it moves down into the weekly chart. Then it moves down into the daily chart. The daily chart is the most dynamic of these three time frames. And you'll see a lot more trades that actually counter long-term higher time frame institutional order flow. So that weekly chart will have a lot longer time period required to change direction versus the daily chart that can go up and down in multiple times and still maintain the bearish nature of the weekly and the monthly. And obviously the monthly takes a long time to change directions. And that's where the power of what I'm going to teach you in this uh, module will give you. Okay, liquidity based bias for a bullish monthly chart, bullish weekly chart, and a bullish daily chart. Intraday charts four hours or less will be correcting and retracing lower. This is where you anticipate the market to enter into a discount and seek sell side liquidity to buy from. And what we just showed you an example of was the bullish order block that you would use in this instance. And we're actually going to go into the dollar index and actually break it down and show you all this uh, conceptually. 
protective sell stop raids or returns to bullish order blocks or fair value gaps and or filling of a liquidity void, each offering a potential low risk liquidity run, buying for a target above a recent high. Just like we were referring to earlier, you're going to be aiming for something on the daily chart, preferably. And you're going to be looking for buy stops above the marketplace on a daily high. It could be an, um, it could be yesterday's high. It could be last week's high that you can see on the daily chart. It could be last month's high. Um, it could be intra-week high. Okay, but try to find something on the daily chart um, to, to give you a trade in terms of uh, framing your idea that you want to be a buyer. And then preferably look for something in the weekly chart that would support even higher because if you have something higher on the weekly chart, uh, you probably will have a lot better odds behind your uh, trade if you're looking to move into a level on the weekly chart. And then preferably, obviously, um, the monthly chart, if it's bullish, you'll be in sync with the institutional order flow that would be seen by studying that time frame. So let's take a look at the monthly, weekly, and daily on the dollar index and give a conceptual idea of what I'm referring to here using bullish order blocks. So you take a look at the resistance levels you see here. We have equal highs here. Okay. And price came down and hit a, a level of support. You saw that happen here. Okay, so we know that there's equal highs up here. So what's above equal highs? What was taught to you in September? It's going to be in the form of buy stops. It's too clean, too neat. And price come down, cleared out an old low, but we're not going to talk about stop runs here. We're going to look at this as a support level. Okay, all we're doing is classifying this as a support. Price comes down, hits that. Okay, and we're going to wait to see if there's a willingness to trade away from it. We see it happen here. When that occurs, this up candle violates the down candle right before the level was hit at this support level. So once we have that, we now have a order block that's validated. So now we can be a buyer. If price comes back down into this candle's opening, where it starts to body the candle, uh, that price level is 94.58. Let me just double check that. The opening is 94.58. Yes, correct. So when price trades back down into it, as you can see here, move over a little bit more, show more data. Price trades down into it on this candle. Now it quickly moves away from it on this candle here. But at that moment when it hits this, Okay, the, the low on that candle comes in at 94.07, 94.07, and the level we had here is 94.58, so about, uh, about 50 pips, thereabouts, in terms of movement through the level, and again, this is a monthly chart, so a little bit of uh, flexibility is necessary. I'm looking for very easy to find low resistance liquidity runs with a bullish order block. So when price hits it, uh, this particular month is August of 2016. So we could expect to see some bullishness in August. And I'll let you see the rest of the data here. You can see clearly that the market did, in fact, trade all the way up through to equal highs here, the present time of this recording, uh, December 2016. And we're going to take another look at this down candle here because this order block becomes another support level. Remember, if we anticipate bullish price here, doesn't that by nature support price in the form of support and resistance ideas? So this level here, if we see a down candle, a off of that level, that could be a potential bullish order block as well. Remember, it's going to be trading down into that level. And why are they doing this? They're going down there to pick up more 
opportunities to get long at a cheaper price, more discount price. So when price was a bearish candle here, that's when the order block would have been hit again. Okay, and then what do we have here on this candle? It violates this down candle's high. Okay, and the open on that candle is the open is 95.98. And the level is 95.98 on our level here on the segment. And you can see price hits that level here. It opens on this candle and trades all the way down, hits it. This would be another support level. The anticipate seeing prices trade higher. So what we're going to do is we're going to drop down into a weekly chart. And we're going to start looking at this month here. And we're going to put a vertical line there. Delineating everything to the right. Of this vertical line and I'm going to highlight it big and bold so we can't miss it and we'll just make it a big old bright red color okay so now we're going to drop down into a weekly chart and we'll see how this gives us a weekly bias as well here's here it is here price trades down into that level okay price rallies away when price rallies away like that we're going to be looking for an objective to go long on this level in here right in here so how many times did price move away from this down candle is by and identified again we're going back out to a, a monthly chart That's this level here. So in May, prices validated that order block in May. Okay, so we're going to move over into May. There's May. Okay, and here's that order block level on the monthly chart. So price trades down into it here, and we wait to see does price want to rally away we're in this is the level you have to be identifying because it's the monthly order block the bullish order block on a monthly level so we're going to broaden that one up a little bit okay and then price is trading down into that so what are we waiting for we're waiting for evidence to support the idea that the large traders want to send price higher price does that here it violates this down candle right here it's it's high is broken right there okay right there so now this order block on a monthly level can be refined to this level right there okay so price trades through this down candle now this down candle on a weekly has been refined from a monthly level so now we can anticipate this level if it's traded back down into it we could be a buyer at that level we see that happening here price trades down into it notice the down candles midpoint or mean threshold right here just pierces it just a little bit but does not go down below the body of the down candle what do we do we, we identify we're in a range the range is this low to this high it's trading back down into internal range liquidity absorbing some more buys in this down candle we should see the responsiveness on the upside now mind you this is a weekly chart look at the body's respect of this down candles opening okay yes it trades down through a little bit but we could be a buyer at that level here with the expectation that we're going to see a run we're at right above these highs okay right above these highs so now here's when bearish order blocks are not considered this up candle right for this down move here we would not look to that as a selling point we don't look at that as we're going to get short here when it trades up to that this 
up candle, we don't look at that and say, okay, we're going to get short. Why? Because the higher time frame is suggesting we're going to be going higher overall, long term. And the long term trend direction is going to drive a lot more significant price action than looking for sells. In other words, we're going to be looking to be buyers on dips and selling on the rallies to take profit. So that's when you want to avoid uh, bearish order blocks because you're standing in way of the institutional order flow. So there's going to be buy stops above these highs here that we're going to sell our longs to. They're willing buyers. Great. We're going to be willing sellers if price gets up to that point from down here. In the form of pips, we have a range of almost 300 pips, 290 pips potential range there. Okay. And there's nothing wrong with that. So now also we have this level in here, we can be keying off of on a daily time frame, and we can use a four hour time frame as well to refine that. We're going to look at this level here. Price shows a willingness to want to move away, and it does. We can now identify this level here, which was the other monthly higher bullish order block. We're going to refine that level too. Well, how are we going to refine it? But well, we have this down candle right before the price moves higher. This candle trading through the last down candle right here. That validates this down candle as a bullish order block. So we can borrow this level for a moment. Put it right on the opening. Okay, price validates the bullish order block right there. Okay, and you, you can see that it trades back down through it. In this instance, we didn't get that much of a move away. We want to see price move away. We want to see that. Preferably, what I'm looking for is a move of whatever the order block is. Now, this is a, a notation for your notes, okay, because this is the first time I've included this. If you see a move, here's your order block. What I like to look for is two to three heights or the range, if you will of the order block, I want to see at least two to three times that as a rally away. And that'll give me a nice, decent expectation to see a retracement back into to get another opportunity to buy long. We have that there. Price rallies up to this point here and then comes all the way back down into what? We have this down candle. We could have kept that there and it would, we would have missed any new opportunity. But look what we have here. This down candle has traded into that old order block as well. So now we have a higher bullish order block right here because this candle's open is higher than this candle. So now we can refine that same level just up to a higher time frame or not a higher time frame, but a higher order block. So now we can refine our level to that point right there. Price moves away, trades through this candle's high right here, validating this is a bullish order block. Again, we're going to be looking for a rally of two to three times the order block's body's height. So it has to trade about here, here, here. So at this point here, we have a valid swing. So now we can look for a retracement back down. This candle's opening is 95.85. The low on this candle is 95.87, so it's only two pips away from that. The high on this candle is 95.86, so it still was only one pip away from that as well. But we always add pips to our levels to get in to cover the dealing spread. We also see another higher down candle that's higher than this one. We have to move our level up to that new down candle. Every time it creates a new down candle, that's going to be the new potential bullish order block. Price trades down into it here. So there's another opportunity to be a buyer here. So that's what we do from a higher time frame to a lower time frame. We refine our entries and our levels with this in mind. Price makes a run through. Even after taking this 
level out here, you can take partial profits out here. Okay, take a little bit more profits out at an old weekly high here. Remember, we're looking for weekly highs to take profits at. And then leave a little bit on. And when price comes back down, we can now add back on the positions we took off here and here. Add them here as new longs. And as price rallies through to external range liquidity, which is this high here, entering at internal range liquidity at this bullish order block here, the range again, about 310 pips, just to get first profit here, okay? And then you're gonna look for an expansion to continue to take out this high here and this high here for what? External range liquidity. What's gonna be above these highs? Buy stops. So you're gonna be looking to sell to those participants that would have an interest of buying about above these highs. Refining it further into a daily time frame, you can see all these levels get much more refined. You can see the reactions at these levels again, and now because these are weekly levels, we can see the reaction at them on a daily basis. The levels are traded back down into here, over shoulder block, the weekly level that we transposed over here into a daily. We can see that this down candle, two down candles in a row. On any time frame, you have to blend them together to get one full order block. In this case, it's two down candles as, as one full bullish order block. So we can refine that here, use the wicks and the bodies to look for that as well. But we're going to prim focus primarily on the, the open on the candle. You see it hits it here. This is all during the election, which I personally was on the sidelines. I did not do any trading. And then recently, we had this down candle we talked about prior to this week's trading, the week ending December 16th, 2016, in a pre-market analysis, I told you to focus on this down candle prior to this big move up. I said that we would look for the mean threshold of this down candle. Why? Because I didn't think we we're gonna get down to this down candle. Wasn't necessary because I, I viewed this as a run on stops, which we'll talk about in the next teaching. But we traded right back down into the middle point of this down candle or mean threshold, and then we expected to see what happened. External range liquidity above this high, and then continue higher, reaching into the higher time frame levels we were looking for, uh, 103, 103.50, and then 104 is next. Ultimately, 105, 107 is still in the cards for dollar index long term. So you can see how dynamic working from the monthly levels to the weekly levels, refining them, waiting for confirmation that there is a displacement by smart money, and then simply waiting for those levels to be retraded down into. And you can refine these as, as small as you want by going into as low as a five minute chart. If you want the ultra really, really low risk uh, entry and small stops. But you're looking for the direction from the monthly, the weekly, and the daily to get you a directional bias. And only focusing on those higher time frame directions, those order blocks are the ones that you buy. Those order blocks also um, will keep you from taking focus on the bearish order blocks. Because while bearish order blocks or the last up candle rate for the down moves that you see in price, those are good objectives to take profits at. OK, um, if you hit a bearish order block during a time of day when profit taking should take place, guess what? You may not get that run above an old high. You may end up having to take profits at that bearish order block and then wait for Asia and Frankfurt and then London to you know, retrace a little bit and then drive through. And then you'll see that run on a new higher high or capturing external range liquidity. So there's a lot of factors that you have to keep in mind. but this teaching was to focus your attention more on only getting on the long bullish order blocks when the monthly and the weekly and the daily show you clear indications that the market's being accumulated and only using bearish order blocks, okay, to take profits when time of day is an impact. But if time of day is not in, uh, in effect, you don't even consider the bearish order block. You might expect them to pause and consolidate there, but you're looking for them 
to drive price through an old high to absorb external range liquidity because they're going to look to take profits at a higher price, not just at an old high or inside of an old high. They're going to try to build a premium in and expand that range because it's going to draw in more participation, more excitement in the form of the funds. And that's what this business is all about, drawing allocations from large institutional traders that trade uh, managed funds and uh, larger uh, position holders. So with that, guys, I wish you good luck and good trading.